Hello, this RDM Byte is a follow-on from our previous one on EDIJ and decolonization in data management. If you haven't already watched our introduction to the topic, it might be worth checking that out before coming back to this video. This video will cover why you might want to incorporate these concepts to benefit your research and data management. By the end of this video, you should be able to discuss the importance of EDIJ and decolonization in data management analyze some ethical and legal considerations for data management, evaluate different subfields of biology for the EDIJ and decolonization considerations which might be relevant to them, critique the data management policy of your institution in terms of these concepts. So, how does EDIJ apply to data management? These ideas can be considered and applied to data management practices in many ways. One major aspect of increased accessibility via EDIJ is improved reproducibility and integrity of data. If the data is made accessible to everyone, then it is far harder to avoid mistakes or misconduct being spotted by someone. Naming conventions and language choices for and within data are also key aspects of EDIJ and decolonization of data management. Inclusive language, which avoids using dehumanising and discriminatory language or terminology which perpetuates colonial ideas, is vital for inclusive data management. The choices of language for collection, processing, storage and sharing are also important to consider. Who needs access to this data and can they access it? The care principles, which we will cover in more depth later, are also an important and useful way to ensure people-centred thinking is applied to data management practices, and similarly, the consideration of issues around ownership of data and credit and acknowledgement for contributing groups, including non-researchers. There are multiple benefits to considering EDIJ and decolonization in your data management. Obviously, the key benefit is ethical in terms of allowing equitable access to data and avoiding harm to communities. However, a number of other benefits to individual researchers and the wider scientific community are also present. Greater accessibility and reduced bias mean better science is conducted with more robust and reliable conclusions and reduced issues with integrity and reproducibility. More accessible science also means more access to funding. Many funding bodies now stipulate that EDI must be included in all proposals for them to be considered for awards. Greater trust in science is fostered by inclusive measures and more accessible data for the general public and by the knowledge that historical justice is being considered by scientists towards groups who have previously suffered at the hands of scientists. Collaboration opportunities increase when more people have access to data from different fields, and this can bring new insights and ways of solving problems. Diversity and inclusive working environments also foster increased innovation and different ways to think about problems and conceptualise ideas, which can lead to new breakthroughs. Data management ethics concerns the moral principles underlying the data cycle, from conceptualisation of a project through collection, processing, analysis, dissemination, and reuse. The key idea here is the minimization of harm and maximization of benefit. However, other major ethical considerations include respecting the rights of individuals and groups, ensuring informed consent is in place at all stages, avoiding exploitative practices, ensuring integrity and appropriate ownership and crediting practices. We will very briefly diverge into the legal aspects of equality in data management, but the relevant laws for your project will likely include many others, depending on your subfield and whether the data involve international aspects in any way. From an equality perspective, the main considerations in UK law include the Equality Act and Data Protection Act, as well as the Human Tissue Act and the laws regulating animal research. These cover a huge range of aspects aspects of data management, from the design of experiments and sample handling, all the way through to things like applying reasonable adjustments for the researchers collecting data and any privacy concerns for data subjects when sharing data. Other local policies around sharing and EDIJ may also apply to your work and other commercial legal documents such as NDAs and patents can have implications to data sharing.
It is important to consider all of these aspects at the outset of beginning a research project when considering design and the types of data you will be dealing with. The key question for ethical data management, as we have already said, is what are the potential harms and benefits of this data? A number of other questions should also be asked for each data management plan. Is the data being collected in an ethical way or was it if the data is being reused? Were the relevant impacted communities consulted and were their concerns listened to and addressed? Who owns the data? Should they own it or should someone else be the owner of this data? Do the people being most impacted by the data have sovereignty over it and the choices made around it? Who should be able to access the data? Can they access it? Think about all the groups who may be impacted by the data, but also the general public, disabled people, and things like language, skill set, and resource barriers. Think about whether the data should be accessible at all. Does it deal with sensitive topics or could it cause harm in any way? Is the data being collected and used in a partnership model where the group having the data collected on them have an input on the same footing as those collecting it? Have assumptions or inadvertent exclusions introduced biases to the data which contravene EDIJ and decolonisation ideals? We will finish with a couple of tasks. Think about your subfield of research. What are the legal, ethical, what are the legal and ethical considerations of your subfield? How would applying EDIJ bring benefits to your research for you and your team? How might EDIJ benefit other researchers trying to work on the same topic as you? Consider other impacted groups and stakeholders in your research. What are the potential benefits to them if you incorporate EDIJ into your data management? Now see if you can locate your institution or department's data management policy. Does it give any consideration to EDIJ? Does it mention EDIJ at all? Can you think of ways you could improve the policy in terms of EDIJ and decolonization? What could be added to the policy? That's the end of this video. Follow-up videos on these topics are available as RDM Bytes if you'd like to learn more.